There are many conspiracies out there in the world of YouTube, but for some reason this one keeps popping up time after time. I should let you know though that I uh, prefer to call them <laughs> dinosaur lie. Yes, the great big dinosaur hoax is back as we take our second look into the world of dinosaur deniers. Thank you for joining me. My name is Simon Dan and you found yourself smack bang in the middle of another Tim Fall Tuesday episode. Today's video is from a channel called Christians Against Dinosaurs and the presenter in question has an issue with the amount of food required to keep a dinosaur going. Interesting. I'm sure she's got some pertinent reasons as to why. Let's find out. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I wasn't just sat here staring at you. Honest. Didn't see you there. Oh, in that case then I've, uh, I've just arrived. Um, just doing a little bit of reading. Um, some dinosaurs, the Brachiosaurus. Nice! Love Brachiosaurus. Tell me more about it. I like doing a little bit of reading before bed. Every night, um, especially on dinosaurs. Oh, you're going to bed. Okay, no problem. I'll read my own book. I should let you know, though, that I uh, prefer to call them <laughs> dinosaur lie. Oh, you're still up. Did you say dinosaur lie? Um, I will say that from an early age, I was indoctrinated to believe in dinosaurs and this dinosaur lie. The paleontologists kind of cooked up for us um, to get themselves millions and millions of dollars. I don't think that's their primary reason for doing it. If it was me, the best part about the job would be the actual discovery that's going on. So at the end of the day, it actually was reading these books on dinosaurs and seeing all of these accounts of these fossils that came out and were put together to make these animals. And I was really intrigued by them for a very long time. And um, I mean, if, if you look at the size of these dinosaurs, they're unlike anything else alive today. Indeed. The largest dinosaur ever discovered is the Argentinosaurus. It is said to have been almost 40 meters long and weighed as much as 100 metric tons. Wow. So, it makes you think, oh, wow, how come animals now aren't that size? And your thought process kind of goes along from there. Well, it does, but not in the ways yours does. There's a couple of reasons as to why the animals back then were so big and today they're not. The first is oxygen content in the atmosphere. In the past, the percentage of oxygen in the air was higher, which allowed animals to grow bigger bodies. There are experiments going on right now where scientists are growing dragonflies in an oxygen-rich environment and getting them to grow 15% larger. The second reason is our old friend time. According to a rule called Cope's Rule, animals tend to get larger the more time they are allowed to evolve. Then you get a mass extinction. The larger ones get wiped out and the smaller ones carry on. The last mass extinction was 65 million years ago. Not really enough time to get some super-sized animals. I will share with you that the Brachiosaurus is 23 metric tons and 75 feet long. It's a big dinosaur, right? Indeed it was. Um, thinking about how massive that dinosaur is, you'd wonder, well, how much would that dinosaur have to eat every single day in order to survive? Any guesses? 167 veggie burgers? 264 jacket potatoes, 1,358 corn on the cobs. 1,000 pounds every day. Wow, okay. So that's around 450 kilograms. To put that into perspective, here's the mountain from Game of Thrones lifting 450 kilograms. thousand pounds of the actual plant life that they need every single day. 
No. Okay. Well, they're big dinosaurs, so they have big heads, so maybe, no. The Brachiosaurus actually has a tiny head. Their head is more on par with the size of yours or mine. Our survey said... Here is a picture of a Brachiosaurus, with its head altered to the size of yours or mine. That was a fake fact right there, wasn't it? So imagine that amount of food, that, that massive amount of food going into your mouth every single day, right? That's a lot of food. It's a lot of food for you and I, but for a Brachiosaurus, which by your own admission weighs around 23 tonnes, it's about 2% of its body weight. I weigh around 190 pounds. Breakfast, lunch and dinner for me consists of about 4 pounds of food, which is, guess what, about 2% of my body weight. If you really want to feel sorry for an animal, check out the hummingbird. This poor bugger needs to eat 200% of its body weight each day just to get out of the nest each morning. Now, take into account that the Brachiosaurus, no molars. They were only working with incisors, right? No canines, no molars. This is true. Brachiosaurus did only have one type of tooth, a spoon-shaped one, but that's all they needed. They literally used them to strip the leaves off branches and then they just swallowed. Without any kind of grinding or shredding mechanism in their mouth, they had to consume 1,000 pounds of plant life every single day. Now, in order to think about that, you need approximately the way that plant life is scattered and was scattered in those times, 2.5 square miles of distance covered every single day by an animal that they anticipate walked at about 0.02 miles per hour. Our survey said... I do not know where you pulled that one from. 0.02 miles per hour is actually around one centimeter per second. I think they were able to do a bit faster than that. Experts estimate their true speed to be around six to 10 miles per hour. 0.02 miles per hour, a beast that size had to travel 2.5 square miles in order to consume the amount of food they needed to eat every single day. Let's work out how hard that must have been for the Brachiosaurus. 2.5 square miles is about 1.6 miles by 1.6 miles. Even if the Brachiosaurus was walking at its slowest estimate of 6 miles per hour, it would only have taken 16 minutes at that speed to do that distance. Hardly a pilgrimage for lunch, is it? It's not possible. It's not possible for these animals. They would have had to eat from the time they woke up in the morning to the time they went to bed at night, and they still wouldn't have had enough to support their massive body size. Well, no. I just proved they could have done it before their mid-morning belly grumble. It doesn't make sense. It does. It, 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 it couldn't have happened really. And at the time, scientists are saying there was 65% all plant eaters, 35% meat eaters. The ratios don't add up. Well, 65% and 35% equals 100%. So I'd say they match up quite well. None of it makes any sense. These dinosaurs could not support their body weight by eating plant life alone without these grinding mechanisms in their mouth. There wasn't enough time in the day. So I ask you, that, atheists. Just did. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? I do not know where these people get their facts from. My family fortunes buzzer is on overtime at the moment. Right, that about wraps it up for another Tim Fall Tuesday. I'm really enjoying these ones at the moment and I'm looking for a bit more inspiration. So if you guys out there have got any weird or wacky conspiracies you want me to take a look at, please do let me know at Twitter. Uh, I'm on at Simon Dan. Thank you all for watching. I've been Simon Dan. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. There's just enough time left to say congratulations to Miles Davis for reaching his 1,000 subscriber mark. He does some fantastic flat earth debunking. You must check him out. I'll leave the link to his channel in the description. I'll see you all Friday where apparently a flat earther has got onto a talk show. Until then. <laughs>